Altogether, there are five rhino species, two in Africa and three in Asia. For a year, we followed their tracks on both continents. This had never been tried before. Isolated from the rest of the world, a highly endangered rhino species found its last refuge in Ujung Kulon National Park on the western tip of the Indonesian island of Java. In the remote peninsula, we went in search of this phantom, which only very few people have seen face to face. The questionable record of being the rarest mammal on earth belongs to the Javan one-horned rhinoceros. No zoo anywhere in the world houses this species. In May 2000, we took part in an expedition of the Worldwide Fund for Nature into this hardly accessible and challenging environment in order to search for any traces of the Javan rhino. Under the guidance of local trackers and experts, the chance existed that we might find the most precious animal in the park. This would be sensational. The Javan refuge is only 761 square kilometers in area, but the national park is of vital importance for the preservation of the species. Here, the fascination of the jungle is unspoiled. In 1992, this last remaining natural forest in Java was proclaimed a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. In 1883, the eruption of the volcano Krakatau took place, only 50 kilometers away. With 36,000 human fatalities, it was the mightiest explosion ever in history. Two-thirds of the mountain were blown up by the force of the blast. The 40-meter-high tsunami wiped out almost all life on the Ujong Kulon Peninsula. Therefore, this jungle is only 120 years old. Nevertheless, in parts, the forest is extremely dense, making movement difficult. Finding a Javan rhino would not be so easy. Actual sightings are very rare. This creature is so shy and secretive that wherever it smells a human intrusion, it avoids the place for days. Hiding in the dense undergrowth of the rainforest is a definite survival advantage because poachers find it extremely difficult to locate them. Unfortunately, the same holds true for researchers trying to study them. As we crisscross the area on foot, we frequently come across rhino footprints. We often find fresh dung along the trails as well, unnervingly fresh. But while trying to follow the tracks, we invariably lose them in the dense terrain. Ivan, an expert local tracker, knows every corner of the park. He's in charge of collecting droppings and urine. This biological information is sent to New York for DNA analysis. Tracks, wallowing sites, and even the distribution of dung are determined exactly by the global positioning system. Although Ivan works 25 days per month in Ujung Kulon, he's had on average only one rhino sighting per year. The same holds true for Yaya, who lived in Borneo before he joined the WWF. He and his colleagues take care of the camera traps. Camera trapping started with tiger research in Sumatra and was adopted in 1991 for the rhino census in Ujong Kulon. In combination with infrared beams, 34 cameras are placed in the most likely locations within the park. They are checked on average twice a month. The films have to be collected and replaced. Due to the rains and high humidity, the equipment may not work perfectly, so it must be cleaned regularly. After the batteries have been renewed, it's important to place the infrared beams in the right position. Whenever an animal of corresponding size crosses this infrared beam, the camera automatically takes a picture. 
Often wild pigs are responsible for the photographs. Banting or wild cattle are numerous in the park as well. Only the males have black coats, while the females are usually a golden brown. But also leopards in their normal and black colour cross the infrared beam. Here, a rare dole or Asian wild dog. The survey reveals that at most 50 rhinos survive here. They are most active at dusk or at night. Individuals are identified by sex, size, skin markings and estimates of age. An encouraging sign is that some of the pictures show mothers with calves in tow. They no longer have natural enemies because the last definite sighting of a tiger in Java was at the end of the 1950s. The best estimate on numbers based on camera coverage is between 46 and 58. Nazir Furt from the WWF Indonesia explains. But in 1967, we really make a transex and then count the tracks in the transex and started using a systematic way of sampling and so on. On that time, the number was 25 in 1967. It's not a very good number, of course. And then we start to put strict protections in 10 years from 67 to uh, 78, something like that, 79, the number doubled, more than 50 rhinos. It was a very encouraging result that within 10 years that number doubled, and that can be happened because of strict protections. Despite our careful survey of the area, we weren't very successful in locating any rhinos. We'd been looking for six weeks. A strong feeling of resignation overtakes us. <coughs> the insects in the camp and inside our sleeping bags, as well as the snakes, make life very interesting. But should we give up? Should we try another time? Rhinos are creatures of habit and show a preference for certain water holes within their home ranges. Even if water is available at other rainwater pans, they will return to their preferred water hole or wallowing site. We persevered, and indeed, it eventually happened, what we were eager for for weeks. Close to an often frequented water hole, we find the rarest large animal on earth feasting on leaves within the dense vegetation, seemingly unaware of our presence. A sight like in primordial times. This adult animal can easily be identified as a male because only bulls boast a prominent horn, while the females have a lump similar to a half coconut. We hoped it would come more into the open, to the nearby waterhole, here the air is not filled with human scent. As we anticipated, it comes to visit the waterhole. Despite our high position in a tree, it's obviously aware of our presence and reacts nervously. Like all rhinos, it orientates itself with its keen senses of smell and hearing, because these archaic creatures are notoriously short-sighted. The single horn is usually small, seldom longer than 10 centimetres. This Javan rhino must have a shoulder height of approximately 150 centimetres. The body mass rarely exceeds 1,500 kilograms. In appearance, it's closest to the Indian rhinoceros. Both have a single horn and remarkable skin folds or plates. But there are distinct differences between their neck plates and skin texture. A report in 1988 that Javan rhinos had been rediscovered in Vietnam caused a stir in the international conservation community. The discovery prompted an intensive survey of the region where a female Javan rhino had been shot by a local hunter. Today it's estimated that at most 10 to 15 animals survive within an area of no more than 750 square kilometers in Vietnam. With such a small population, however, the prospects for survival are not good. And so Ujung Kulon remains the last viable home of this magnificent pachyderm.
Due to the dedication of Indonesian and International Monitoring and Protection Foundations, the Javan rhino found a safe haven in Ujong Kulon. This is an exceptional achievement. The aim for a deeper understanding of the Javan rhinoceros is a clear indication of the high standards maintained by the staff of the WWF. To those who do not understand conservation, these animals are of no value. Many people in the Javan rhinoceros' homelands, especially in Vietnam, would like to see the land upon which the rhino lives cleared for agricultural purposes. However, as long as the governments protect these lands, agriculture cannot occur. Attention is therefore being given to public awareness campaigns and employment programs among the local communities. The conservation authorities recently started emphasizing the significance of national parks and the value of endangered species in schools. The uncontrolled hunting of rare animals could conceivably eradicate the remaining ones in the wild. The future of Ujongkolo depends inevitably upon the responsible cooperation of the local population. In the foothills of the Himalayas, in Nepal and India, we find a close relative of the small Javan rhino, the much larger Indian rhinoceros. Only these two species have a single horn and boast the characteristic skin folds or plates. In 1950, there were no more than 400 Indian rhinos left in the wild. Two important sanctuaries were established exclusively for these animals. Thanks to successful conservation measures in the Royal Chitwan National Park in southern Nepal and Kaziranga National Park in Assam, India, their numbers increased and today there are approximately 1,800 on the Indian subcontinent. The most conspicuous characteristic of the Indian rhino are the deep tough folds in its skin which are the mark of an animal carrying armor plates. The peculiar appearance creates the impression of a truly prehistoric beast. This is not far from the truth, as they have changed little in the last million years. The first creatures resembling modern rhinos appeared some 30 million years ago. They were distributed on all continents in a variety of bizarre forms and attained such high numbers that they dominated the planet. The largest land mammal ever to walk on Earth was the hornless 11 meters high Baluchatherium. With a total body mass of 20 tons, it weighed four times as much as an adult elephant. A well-known rhino was Coelodonta, or woolly rhinoceros, which occurred from Britain to eastern Siberia and attained fame by being the subject of Ice Age artists who depicted it on the walls of caves in France. Indian rhinos have become a big tourist attraction, generating income for the local communities bordering the parks. In both India and Nepal, game viewing is done on elephants. This mode of transport has two distinct advantages. A ride on an elephant's back provides a perfect four-meter high vantage point and is definitely safer than walking. Rhinos are of great cultural importance in Asia. Both sexes boast one well-developed horn on the nose. Although horns of up to 60 centimeters have been recorded, they are seldom longer than 20. In the meantime, many local people have learned that with live rhinos, there's a better living to be made than with dead ones. Contrary to popular belief in the West, the Chinese do not use rhino horn as an aphrodisiac. Only some Indians do. Rhino products play an important role in traditional oriental medicine and remain in great demand. Almost every part of the body is claimed to have medicinal properties, even the dung and urine. No part of a rhino is wasted. In the Middle East, especially in Yemen, rhino horn is also highly sought after. As a sign of manhood, Yemeni men traditionally carry carved daggers, the handles of which are always carved from rhino horn. Were it not for the incredible value placed upon this protuberance in Asia and the Middle East, the rhino's future would certainly be more secure. 
Apart from females with calves, Indian rhinos are solitary by nature and normally confine their movements to a small area of between one and five square kilometers. This home range meets most of their requirements for food, water and shelter. Tigers are the only natural enemies of rhino calves. They are vulnerable up to the age of 12 months. Thereafter, their skin has become too thick to be severely injured by tigers. By rubbing itself against its mother's body, the calf intensifies the physical contact. This activity provides security and self-confidence. The close relationship between cow and calf may last for as long as five years. Because of their strength and bulk, adult rhinos are more than a match for any predator, but there are frequent fights between the males, sometimes resulting in the death of an opponent. Unlike the African species, the Indian rhino's horn is not the chief instrument of attack. The formidable razor-sharp teeth are. With their elongated lower jaw incisors, they can cut an opponent's hide without difficulty, sometimes resulting in the death of the victim. we decided to approach the rhinos on foot. The trail had been used by a tiger only hours before. A caterpillar demonstrates the enormous size of its footprints. In case of an encounter with rhinos, it's advisable to be prepared for all eventualities. Any intruder straying too close, cornering or provoking one had better watch out. They show no fear of anything, including people. On occasion, they may charge and press home their attack. This experience can be terrifying. The best thing to do is disperse in several directions and climb the nearest tree. Even at two and a half tons, this fighting machine is almost twice as fast as any human. The combination of nature conservation and tourism is bringing old lifestyles into modern times. For many locals, rhinos have become capital. For others, however, they remain competition. Indian rhinos share their range with a large number of people. In order to feed the ever-growing human population, the demand for land is increasing, and the people have encroached closer and closer on the boundaries of the parks. Yet at night, the rhinos leave the sanctuary of the parks to raid the neighboring fields. Crop damage by rhinos is considerable, chronic in some areas. The agility with which this old bull uses his upper lip is amazing. He can extend it into a proboscis and with the utmost skill and finesse select particular twigs to pull into his mouth. With the natural increase in numbers, the future of the Indian rhinoceros now seems secure. But the support of farmers and adjoining communities is vital for the long-term survival of these magnificent creatures and other wildlife. Sumatra in Indonesia. Even today, this territory remains a mystery for many people. The tropical rainforest harbors millions of plants and animals and is among the richest living systems on Earth. The jungles of Southeast Asia have remained virtually untouched for a hundred million years. They are, in fact, much older than those found anywhere else on our planet, including South America and Africa. It's not easy to spot animals in the dense rainforest. This is the kingdom of the orangutan. Like no other animal, these apes have become the symbol of Indonesian wildlife. The diversity of species on the largest archipelago on Earth is amazing. Indonesia is home to more mammal species than any other country. But the ancient rainforests are disappearing at an alarming rate. Human greed, overpopulation and large-scale forest fires have taken their toll. The result is that areas with suitable habitats for wildlife are becoming smaller and smaller. 
Here lives the smallest of the five rhino species, the shy Sumatran rhinoceros. While following the tracks of this legendary creature, we joined a team of the rhino patrolling unit in the Waikambas National Park. We were only allowed to enter this reserve by observing stringent regulations. Sumatran rhinos are found only in the most remote areas of the island. The machine guns of the forest guards leave no doubt that poaching is far more serious here than in Ujong Kulon on the neighboring island of Java. Efforts to obtain figures for this species show that the true world number is definitely less than 500. Most of them live in isolated pockets on Sumatra, the Malaysian Peninsula and in Borneo. Sumatran rhinos are exposed to intensive poaching and their numbers are declining rapidly. Drastic measures had to be taken to physically prevent poaching. With their tireless efforts and perseverance, the anti-poaching squads have earned respect and acquired the status of an elite corps, laying their life on the line every time while on patrol. There's been no further rhino poaching in Y. Kambas. There's a different picture, however, concerning the situation of the last 20 to 30 Sumatran tigers, which are still under great poaching pressure. The snares are well camouflaged and placed right on the trail. Two parallel pieces of wood reveal the presence of the trap. They're mounted in such a way that the animals have to step into them. Snares for rhinos and tigers are usually of different thicknesses. Rhinos have the strength to free themselves from the much thinner tiger snares. In 1994, the scouts found on average 60 snares per month. Nowadays, it's been reduced to almost zero, an encouraging sign that emphasizes the effectiveness of the patrolling units. Sumatran rhinos always use the same trails to get to the necessary water. We try to take advantage of this habit. The presence of fresh footprints signals that the territory is occupied. Close to a frequently used mud hole, we hope for a sign of the hairy pachyderms. Soon, there's a magical encounter. It's a small female Sumatran rhino. Her tail has been bitten off, probably by a tiger. These truly remarkable creatures are among the rarest animals on Earth. They project something timeless and mystical. The Sumatran rhinoceros is the most primitive rhino alive today. It's believed to have survived almost unchanged for millions of years. Covered in mud, with a hairy coat and equipped with two small horns on her head, this cow is so strange, it's as if she originated from another world. Mr. Huta Barat, program manager of the Indonesian Rhino Conservation Program, remarks. Organizations like the WWF provide financial support from worldwide donations to finance the rhino patrolling units. The survival of these animals has reached a critical stage. In cooperation with the International Rhino Foundation, the WWF is trying to collect data on various threatened animal species in Indonesia and to guard against poaching in an effective way. As rhinos prefer to rest during the day, we're surprised on our way back to encounter a second rhino. This time a very active male crosses our path. 
Sumatran rhinos are very timid and usually avoid all contact with humans. This individual must have had contact with people before because, to our surprise, it approaches us with great curiosity. He even comes really close to sniff the camera. We're told that this adult male once lived in captivity and is accustomed to people. Hopefully, he will produce some offspring with the resident females. The shape of the mouth, almost like a smile, isn't comparable to any other rhino species. The special liking of rubbing against tree trunks is unmistakable. Now the short shoulder height of this species becomes evident. Sumatran rhinos are the smallest of the five rhino species. With an average weight of only 800 kilograms, they rarely grow higher than 1 meter 20. Unconcerned by our presence, the bull behaves completely naturally. Characteristic is the hairy body which sometimes is covered with a dense, dark, reddish-brown fur, similar to the extinct woolly rhinoceros, a species that lived approximately 15,000 years ago. Easy to recognize are the odd number of toes. Three families are represented in this order Perisodactyla, rhinos, tapirs, and the horse family. All are quite distinct, but all have an odd number of digits, three or one, and carry their weight on the central toe. Unlike the African species, the Sumatran rhino doesn't kick its dung, but its urine. Very little is known about its behavior, and yet this creature is on the verge of extinction. In an endeavor to ensure the survival of these prehistoric beasts, efforts are being made to breed them in captivity. Wild animals are caught and then translocated to captive breeding centers in almost natural surroundings. However, all attempts so far have been unsuccessful. Various captive breeding programs in the 80s even ended in disaster. Of 40 rhinos which were caught for this purpose, 22 died. Except for one female, caught when pregnant, none of the animals ever gave birth. <laughs> The future that faces Sumatran rhinos is a disastrous combination of ever-declining numbers and the disappearance of their habitat. In most places, they are barely able to sustain themselves. Even though the recent population collapse of the African hook-lipped rhino has been more spectacular, and although fewer Javan rhinos survive in the wild, the scattered Sumatran rhinos are the most threatened of all the five species. With every poached animal, the chances of survival for the remaining ones deteriorate even further. Early morning in South Africa's Shushlui Umfolosi, a wildlife reserve of great significance. The black Umfolosi River flows sluggishly through a landscape that's remained unchanged for a hundred years. This game reserve in KwaZulu-Natal is famous for its square-lipped rhinos, also called white rhinos. In South Africa, these giants occur in large numbers, but are virtually extinct in the rest of Africa. They feed exclusively on grass. The misleading name white rhino is probably derived from the Dutch word weit, meaning wide, and referring to the shape of the mouth, which is adapted to grazing. They feed very methodically, standing in one place and moving the head from side to side. Records about which animal is second on the list of the Earth's heaviest land mammals must include this species. In fact, both the Indian and the square-lipped rhinos can weigh over three tons. Those vicious-looking horns, in human terms more precious than gold, are of keratin, similar to the horns of antelopes, or our fingernails. 
Adult males are, by preference, solitary, but this bull approaches the cow with unmistakable intentions. Fearlessly, she confronts him. Her refusal has the desired effect. The male gives up. Only those which qualify are accepted. Meanwhile, the dominant bull of the area is involved with the female and her calf and will not move from her side for the next few days. Gently rubbing horns, they settle next to a water hole in the midday heat. The two approaching bulls haven't been noticed yet. Their eyesight is adapted to their way of life. Rhinos can focus up to a few meters away, but everything further than that is observed as movement rather than as objects. Certainly their arrival has been smelt. The dominant bull stands still and they remain for a while with their horns touching. When the female joins them, the newcomer decides to provoke her. Immediately, he's pushed back by the dominant bull. Normally, an energetic warning is sufficient. The rival steps back and avoids a serious confrontation. Fights seldom end in the death of a combatant, but they can. In rare instances, losers are mortally wounded. Square-lipped rhinos are usually docile and have a moderate disposition. Soon, harmony is restored and all share the area around the water hole. Although white rhinos prefer grassy plains with plenty of shady trees and water, a great variety of landscapes and vegetation zones fall within their habitat. The plant life in this park is worthy of note. The diversity of vegetation, a unique combination of bush, savanna, forest and grassland, is found hardly anywhere else in Africa. There are more plant species in Shushlui Umfulusi than in Ireland, or 70% as many species as in the whole of Great Britain an impressive statistic for an area of only 900 square kilometers. Especially the marshes, lakes and swamps make KwaZulu Natal an El Dorado for thousands of water birds. Pelicans, herons and spoonbills find their fool's paradise. In the dry season, the food swims virtually into their bills. The noon heat drives the hippos onto the mud banks at the edge of the lake. Nile crocodiles are on the lookout for food as well, ready to strike at any movement. The yellow-billed stork rushes out of the danger zone. This pied kingfisher has already eaten its fill. It prefers to observe its surroundings. In close proximity is the hunting ground of the green-backed heron. He takes aim at fish, tiny crabs and snails. Shushlui and Imfulosi are the oldest wildlife sanctuaries on the African continent. They were proclaimed game reserves in 1895. It was here where the famous preservation measures for the square-lipped rhino and the translocation projects of the Natal Parks Board took place. Truly a success story. The southern white rhino was considered to be extinct as long ago as 1882, until, like a miracle, at the turn of the 20th century, a small population of these magnificent animals was rediscovered in Umfulosi. The discovery prompted an extraordinary effort to save them from extinction. Despite occasional setbacks, their numbers continued to rise. Given the opportunity, white rhinos are prolific breeders, even in captivity. Females produce a calf every three to four years, and it can be born at any time of the year.
As a result of vigorous protective measures, the numbers of square-lipped rhinos have risen within a century to currently more than 8,000 individuals. More than 90% of them live in South Africa. Since 1960, thousands of white rhinos have been translocated to various countries in Africa and zoos around the world. The high standards of wildlife management practiced in South African reserves is unequaled anywhere else on the continent. By compiling national rhino conservation strategies, South Africa prepared itself with total commitment for the expected poaching onslaught, which had devastated the rhino populations of other African countries. All rhinos love rubbing their bodies against tree trunks, rocks or termite mounds. Many of these objects have been worn smooth. One can see that they've been used as scratching posts for decades. A hook-lipped rhino enters upon the scene. The prime time of this aged male was a long time ago. The front horn, which he must have broken at some stage, is growing back again. He's been forced out of his territory by a younger rival, and now roams, troublesome and injured, the outskirts of the white rhino's territory. Black or more correctly hook-lipped rhinos have been known to reach a similar height at the shoulder, but are usually shorter and considerably lighter. Their maximum weight is about one and a half tons. Superficially, hook-lipped and square-lipped rhinos are very similar in appearance. However, there are a number of easily observed differences. The smaller head is held high. With a prehensile upper lip for grasping twigs and leaves, hook-lipped rhinos are exclusively browsers. The outsider moves away, limping, but he's resilient. In an intact ecosystem, he can have a life expectancy of 40 to 50 years. The assumption that black rhinos are solitary animals is not true for the females. Almost without exception, the cows are accompanied by a calf. Hook-lipped rhinos are well known for their infamous temper, however. This cow with two calves is accompanied by her own and a fostered calf. At the birth of a new calf, cows reject the older one. As it's still vulnerable to predators, the rejected calf wanders around in search of company and may join up with other youngsters or with another female. This white rhino mother is even taking care of three youngsters at the same time, one of her own and two in search of protection. Elephants and rhinos fill a remarkable evolutionary niche they neither belong to the hunters, nor to the hunted. Access to water is essential for all wildlife in the area. During the dry period of the year, waterholes serve as focal points for most animals. Warthogs are high on the menu for most predators, but this guy can devote himself fully to personal hygiene in the wallow, because his main enemies are not on the prowl during the midday heat. Few animals display such distinct sexual dimorphism as Nyala antelopes. These beautiful animals are endemic to southern Africa. The closest relatives of rhinos are very dependent on water as well. Zebras have to drink at least once a day. Giraffes can survive with little water if necessary. They can make do with the moisture of the plants they consume. For the first few months of its life, a rhino calf always stays very close to its mother. 
Her strongest impulse is to protect it. This youngster is approximately six months old. Its front horn is already five centimeters long. While the mother drinks, Junior investigates the water. Not very appetizing, and it's still tired from walking. The calf remains dependent on its mother's milk until it's almost two years old. As long as the cow stays close to the calf, the youngster has little to fear. All other herbivores have to confront daily the full spectrum of the African predators. Where so much prey abounds, numerous hunters are on the prowl. The wildebeest are so engrossed in drinking, they are completely unaware that they're being watched. However, they hardly need to fear this young leopard. They don't correspond with its prey pattern. Survival is constantly threatened. Other actors are on the stage of the African bush. While occupied by the never-ending search for prey, wild dogs don't need to bother about cover. Implicated in an important and highly specialized task, all carnivores hold a fundamental position within the ecological community. On the other side, the evolutionary battle between predator and prey has had a substantial influence on the refinement of both. By maintaining a balance in the number of animal populations, carnivores help to stabilize their environmental conditions. The misery of one means survival for the others. To eat and be eaten, it's inevitable in the world of nature. These endless cycles of life and death have continued down the ages. It's November, the beginning of the rainy season, and summertime in South Africa. The clouds have delivered plenty of water and transformed the vegetation. But the rain also has its drawbacks. Day by day, the dominant white rhino bull has to renew his territorial boundaries. He does this by spray urination in strategic places. Submissive bulls do not have territories. Their presence within his boundaries is tolerated as long as they accept his dominance. Another way of marking is by regularly defecating in the same spot. Dominant bulls scratch the ground with their hind feet before and after defecating, but do not kick and scatter the dung as do their hook-lipped cousins. Many stories, legends and explanations have tried to resolve why rhinos kick and scatter their dung. Probably they impregnate the hind feet with their scent, which is then spread when the animal moves around. This scent trail might enable other individuals to avoid confrontation. These accumulated piles of dung, called rhino middens, are present throughout the year and visited by all rhinos in the region. The middens represent an interesting micro-ecosystem with a web of relationships. A quiet unseen army of bacteria and fungi consume the dung and cause its decay. Dung beetles also feed on what others avoid. The fresher it is, the more stimulating it is. The insect life in turn is fed on by a variety of birds and reptiles. This red-billed hornbill has a tasty meal. Its cousin, the much larger ground hornbill, observes the scene, but not many beetles and larvae remain to share. Shushlui Umfulosi is a treasure chamber of rare animals. 
The active period of our dominant white rhino bull starts during the late afternoon. He wallows in a mud bath. It's his highlight of the day. Completely unperturbed by the presence of so many buffaloes, the male immediately takes possession of the mud hole and starts wallowing intensively. Although rhinos are not able to roll onto their backs, he tries to cover with moisture as much of his massive body as possible. The wallow provides pleasant cooling and helps to keep parasites away. Soon he is joined by a cow and her young calf, which he greets in typical rhino fashion. Another female and calf join in. The male seems to enjoy the company. They approach each other cautiously, touching noses and gently nudging with the side of the head. Despite the sharp horns, they treat each other with incredible tenderness. The same ritual is repeated with new visitors, a third female with her youngster. Probably all three calves are his offspring. The animals communicate with one another by infrasound. It's inaudible to humans. It's always the male who initiates the interaction, but not all of them seem to be in a playful mood yet. Completely covered in mud, he jerks his head into the air a characteristic invitation among rhinos to play. From an evolutionary point of view, rhinos were one of Mother Nature's most successful species. For millions of years, they were the dominant animals on Earth. The surviving rhino family has only five species, but the extinction that they avoided down the millennia is now happening as a result of human activity. In the last 40 years, the world's rhino population has fallen by an unbelievable 85%. The devastation we have caused is a tragedy for all humankind. 
The basis of conservation is understanding the natural world. What a rhino does in one part of the landscape may affect the existence of a tiny dung beetle in another. That's why it's crucial to preserve not just a single species, but entire ecosystems.